four, three, two, one. Let's do this. Yo, -ho, what is going on? Viewers of the tube, Tyler here, Chico Crypto, coming to you guys live once again on a Tuesday morning, afternoon, morning on the West Coast right now here in Chico, um, afternoon on the East Coast. So markets are looking pretty all right. We had a nice little, since my last live stream um, a couple days ago, Bitcoin was hovering around 5,000. Now we're up to 5,200. So looks good right there. Um, I still think 6K could be, uh, I have a feeling a big price movement's coming this um, week <coughs> to weekend. Um, it's gonna either going to be up or down. I have a feeling, personally, I think it's going to be up. Um, the volume is very telling of what's going on. Volume's holding. Um, high volume, 17 million today. Or was that yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. 17 million today, 16 million. Highest we got was 22 million on the 2nd and 3rd of April. People think we haven't bottomed. Ooh, I don't know. I mean, I still have my hair long, so there is still that feeling that we haven't yet. Um, one thing that is good, though, we got to look at is right here, this chart. This is just overall um, week after week, basically. Um how the markets have done and this is the first time since you know the big pop um that we've had seven consecutive weeks of green so that's pretty nice to see um it's bullish signal i mean the gains haven't been astronomical but they have been green until i mean this week has been very good um compared to last week so we are going up a little bit um for the past six weeks and then this week we had that nice 20 25 percent gain um i mean it's accumulation zone right now you guys it's i mean even if it goes down a little bit up a little bit i mean unless you're a day trader it doesn't really matter i mean like i said you should be cost averaging um that's the smartest move have a set amount of money that you're going to put in every week couple weeks every month and put that in no matter what, because then you buy the highs and you buy the lows, and eventually it'll all even out in the long run. Um, and I mean, we are close to accumulation zone, you guys. The markets have gotten, they got ass rate, basically. Shouldn't have probably said ass. YouTube marks down your video if you cuss within like one or two minutes of the beginning. So, sorry, YouTube. BTC sucks. No, it doesn't. You suck. I mean, there's a lot going on for Bitcoin, you guys. I mean, it's still the most secure. I mean, there's a reason you don't see a lot of applications being built on these smaller blockchains right now, um, especially large applications with a large amount of money because, I mean, you need security right now, and proof of work is a time-tested, proven algorithm as withstood the the beatings the battings i mean there's still other consensus algorithms are in their infancy and we don't know exactly what could happen um i mean that's why a lot of them even neo with the byzantine fault tolerance is um centralized right now because i mean decentralization who knows what could happen with such a new consensus algorithm and i mean dbft created by neo is like three four years old but still it hasn't you know withstood the test of time like bitcoin fake facebook coin nah so yeah this um is good i mean the sign that we have seven consecutive weeks of green that's very bullish signal but then there's um this guy on trading view who says we're gonna have a 30 percent drop of bitcoin incoming um, get ready to buy low lower. Um, bunch of mumbo jumbo. <laughs> um, break from the 200 DMA, start of the new bull market. Blah, blah, blah. And then, yeah, it's right here, um, saying we're breaking similar what happened way back here before the last bull run. And then we're going to have a similar thing where we break from the 200 DMA equals start of the new bull run. And they have a lot of different stuff explaining. A lot of technical analysis stuff I don't understand. <laughs> I'm not going to even try to pretend like I understand. 
Um, I mean, I, there's value in this kind of stuff. Like I've always, people try to say I hate on technical analysis. No, the, there's value in this stuff. It's just my trading strategy. I don't need to use this. I mean, this is better in the short term, long term. Um, if you're a day trader, I mean, if you're getting in and out of cryptos here and there, I mean, yes, technical analysis is very valuable. But if you're a trader like me who just likes to buy it, hold it, let it roll, there's no value in this. I mean, I'm going to keep um, accumulating good projects based off of fundamental analysis. I think FA is greater than um, TA. I mean, in certain aspects, because less stress, of course. I mean, you just got to do the research behind the project. You don't got to stare at charts, you know, all day. So, these guys say 3,800. My personal opinion, I don't think so. I don't, I mean, a 30% drop coming after that rise, it's possible, but I mean, the bulls are here, you guys. I mean, they will buy up um, any large amount of cells. You've seen it over and over. Someone puts in a large cell, that freaking cell just gets eaten up really quick. Um, especially down in the 4K range when we were there. I mean, them trying to push it down. I mean, in the 3,000 range, sell orders just gotten eight up. I mean, they tried. They tried to push it down lower, but it didn't work. Tyler only answers questions in which the question asked fits his bullish outlook. Now, I'm, this is actually I'm talking about right now. It's not bullish outlook. This is actually a bearish outlook. Um, and it's possible. I mean... I'm no mind reader. I don't know what the markets are going to do. I'm not going to try to sit here and lie to you guys. But like I said, I think we're in accumulation zone, so it doesn't matter. But this was some big news um, coming out that China, China's back. Whenever the markets start going up, something big with China comes out. I mean, this could be an indicator that we are in a bullish sentiment right now. Because whenever we do get very bullish, China tries to come out with bad news to push that price down. Um, what came out today was China, China wants to ban Bitcoin mining. So they banned basically Bitcoin trading, and now they're talking about banning uh, mining altogether. Um, in the article, basically it just talks about what who talked about it, National Development and Reform Commission, said on Monday it was seeking public opinions on a revised list of industries it wants to encourage, restrict, or eliminate. The list was first published in 2011. So basically, um, saying that Bitcoin mining, um, unsafe, wasted resources, and pollutes an environment, and it did not stipulate a target date or plan how to eliminate Bitcoin mining, meaning that such activities could should be phased out immediately, the document said. The public has until May 7th to comment on the draft. So, I mean, the repercussions of that could be, I mean, pretty... I mean, it's not going to kill Bitcoin by no means. I mean, a large person... I mean, if China ban bans Bitcoin mining, they do contribute a large amount of hash power. But, I mean, if they drop out, the hash power will go down, um, and then the difficulty retargets, and Bitcoin goes on like normal. So, I mean, the only thing that would be changed probably is the halvening date. Bitcoin's not going to stop. The network won't stop just because hash power goes down. Hey, Zachary, thanks for the tip, brother. Appreciate it, man. Let's, I'll answer some questions right now. Yes, China does love blockchain. Um, crypto preaching Pedro. Um, that's one of the reasons I'm still holding on to ontology. Because they are going to go out into some of their home brewed um, cryptocurrency projects for, you know, I mean, the government doesn't know about blockchain. They don't know about the technology. They're going to hire some people. So that's why I'm looking into ontology. I think they have the the most secure connections with the Chinese government. Love the homeless look. Thanks, man. Hair's getting long. What happened to RAF and rootstock hype? I don't know. Haven't been following it, too. 
Bitmax equals a scam exchange. That's why I never talked about Bitmax, you guys. I mean, I knew there was some funky business going on with Bitmax. Um, what's our token trading at? The token did pump up pretty well. But, I mean, Bitmax came out of nowhere, and they were just trying to write off of all the new types of things, like IEOs coming out. Damn, my computer's going slow. Yeah, see, it got pumped up big time. It came down. I mean, what goes up must come down. It's uh, the law of everything. So regarding, um, you know, good news within Bitcoin, this is actually pretty good news. Bitstamp is a large cryptocurrency exchange that has been around since I first got in. It's been around for a long, long time. Um, more focuses on the European market. Um, I don't even know if you can use it if you're United States, but it looks like they're getting closer to that because they've been granted a virtual currency license by New York financial regulator. So they're going to be granted one of those licenses. It's the 19th company to receive a bit license from the department. So that's pretty cool. Um, I mean, even exchange like Binance doesn't have a, um, they couldn't get one if they wanted to. But even an exchange like uh, Binance doesn't have a bit license. Chico and Company. Can you look at Mox? Getmox.org. I will check it out. We'll see what it is. Probably better not be giving me a virus. <laughs> Anonymous proof of work. Cryptocurrency, 51% attack protection, built-in private data management suite. Hmm. Looks pretty interesting. Why am I not using the Brave browser? I was using it for a bit, um, but I'm on my other laptop um, back home right now, so that's why I'm not on Brave browser. Yeah, I'm still in um, Chico. I took a little bit of a vacation. Um, that's why I haven't been having um, regular content. been taking a few days off. So once I get back to my computer back home, I'll be on Brave Browser. <laughs> Tyler up for the first, first rounds and a half by gases, and Tyler sleeps him in the middle of the third, leaving Hoskinson in a permanent vegetative day <laughs> drinking Cardano crash. Oh, I hate Charles Hoskinson. He is such a smuck. Not a big fan of Matrix AI. I'm not a big fan of a lot of the Chinese projects. Um, I got, you know, just like anyone, last bull run, I got suckered into the China hype because, I mean, a lot of cryptocurrencies were coming out of China and they were making good money because of exchanges like Binance. Um, I mean, Walton got pumped on Binance. Neo got pumped on Binance. Loopering got pumped on Binance. It was a money maker back in late 2017, 2018. Um, but a lot of them aren't building what they were talking about. It's China, China hustle. So regarding cryptocurrency exchanges, um, the Bitcoin exchange Kraken is being sued by their former trading desk manager. So I don't even think Kraken has a bit license. They're actually named by the New York Attorney General um, for operating within uh, New York without a license. Binance was named. There's a few other exchanges, Kraken, um, HitBTC, I think was one of them too. Um, now Kraken's in some more um, hot water. They're getting an employee suing them. And it looks like it was to do with some internal trading desks that buy and sell on their own market than in the traditional financial world. Yep. A New York Attorney General report on crypto exchanges released last year listed several markets such as Bitfinex, Bitflyer, and Poloniex that reported they allowed the practices on their exchanges. 
Um, what's funny was Binance, Kraken, and HitBTC were named as exchanges that didn't give them information regarding their exchange. Sean, New York um, City asked me, am I looking forward to the EOS June announcement? I haven't even heard of it. What's going on? Some big news? Heard about live peer token? No, I haven't. Be ready. JR asked me, do I think Ravencoin can be useful and worth it? Mm, I personally don't like Ravencoin. Um, I don't like how they're lying to a lot of people. Um, Ravencoin is not a just community built coin like Bitcoin or whatever. There's people behind Ravencoin. It's Medici Ventures and Overstock. Um, I mean, those entities, Medici and Overstock, they own a majority of the Ravencoin. And they might have fairly launched it. They might have fairly launched it, but no one knew what Ravencoin was in the beginning. And Medici and them were pointing all of their GPUs, getting a large majority of the coins coming out. Um, and then, you know, um, Patrick Byrne put in, what, like $3 million, um, as an investment, even though it was Medici Ventures, his investment arm that created Ravencoin. And it, it just was all a bunch of weird stuff with that. Ravencoin, Medici, um, T0. BGOGO. Um, Blockchain Brad has talked about BGOGO. Not a big fan of any of the exchanges. I mean, I want DEXs. I don't want centralized exchanges. So I don't try to support them. I mean, there's a few I have supported. I did a sponsored video for Liquid, but the only reason I like Liquid is how they stored their cryptocurrency. They actually stored it in cold storage, um, while other crypto exchanges have the majority of their funds in hot wallets. So this is pretty interesting. The Mt. Gox case, it will never end, never, ever end. Um... So the advocate for Mt. Gox creditors it quits saying Bitcoin payouts could take years. So basically they have a group of people trying to get money back um, from Mt. Gox and Andy Pag, the founder and coordinator of Mt. Gox Legal, told Coindesk in an exclusive interview um, that he now believes ongoing legal issues, in particular a single massive claim by startup incubator and former Mt. Gox partner, CoinLab, I talked about that in a video actually too, may hold up the crypto exchange's civil rehabilitation process for up to two more years. Oh, I mean, that's so crazy. It's gonna be like, what, 2014? Probably by like 2021 is when Mt. Gox will eventually be all freaking ironed out, hopefully, and we won't have to deal with this anymore. Um, but this could be bad for Bitcoin, depending on how the single uh, massive claim goes. Um, CoinLab is suing for a large amount of money. I can't remember the exact amount, but it's in the billions. Um, this is all in Japanese. I don't know if that's in yen or dollars. But it's in the billions they're trying to get money for. And if um, they do win, that means um, some of those bitcoin that the mount gox um people have hold over um they're gonna have to liquidate more of them which means more dumping on the markets oh crypto angels thank you for the tip man i appreciate it my thoughts on theta i love theta it's my favorite um streaming um blockchain platform hands down i want to start streaming on there full time um i'm actually going to talk about it here in a second because there's another streaming platform coming out in which a large YouTuber, PewDiePie, um, has said he's going to be streaming on. So that was interesting. Um, Tyler, thank you for the tip, man. I appreciate it. Is it true that Thor did an exit scam? Um, I mean, if they did, they better be held liable for it. I haven't been following Thor at all. <clears throat> I don't even know if they're coins on coin market cap. But there was a bunch of FUD going on with what's happening with Thor. Like they were talking about not even using the token in their model anymore. I mean, 
that's not all right. I mean, personally, you guys raised that amount of money um, in the millions, and now you're just leaving people who believed in you. <laughs> that's all right. Thanks for, for funding us. Now you get jack shit. I mean, they should be held accountable if that's the plan of action. D Live is trash. D <laughs> you guys didn't like that. Hey, Grow Capital, thank you so much for the kind words. Oh, Coin Lab is suing for $16 billion. I knew it was in the billions. Yeah, it's a large amount of money. I mean, and if they do get, I, I don't think they will get the full amount or anything, but if they get billions, it will mean some more cryptocurrencies will have to be liquidated. Hey, Crypto Mike, thanks, man. D Live is China. <laughs> uh, Theta, I think, is China too. Theta has um, connections to Tencent. <coughs> hey, Chico, I need advice. How about Icon? Should I sell or not? I like Icon. I still hold mine. But, I mean, you shouldn't be 100% in Icon by no means. Um, they are going to have um, a use case. They're going to have transactions running through their platform. Um, I mean, what they're in limbo right now with is how um, the government, Korean government, because Icon is a public chain, they're thinking how they're going to get all the um, through... For it to be legal, how to get, you know, private blockchains from industries throughout Korea onto Icon's public chain. They're working out through all those regulations. So, stop smoking. I'm smoking a vape. I'm vaping. Oh, good question. Um, hey, CXX, thanks for the tip, brother. I appreciate it, man. Um, but a good question from Laxthor09. Did Justin Sun ever give that guy a Tesla? Um, we can check. I'm in contact with the guy, so we can check this live. He actually sent me a message regarding it. Not yet. Maybe this week already. <laughs> it's our chance. Let's not let it go. So I just got this message. I'm going to say, don't worry, brah. We will keep the heat on that scam boy. I'm going to get that guy a Tesla. I mean, no matter what. Sorry, guys. I got to plug in my computer. I'm about to die. Yeah, I'm going to make sure that that guy gets that Tesla. I mean, I'm going to make sure both of them get their Tesla. I mean, we haven't heard anything about it. It's like it's almost like they're trying to sweep it under the rug. Like, oh, this has never happened. Never forget. Never forget. Crypto Ninja, I'm glad you finally caught a live stream, brother. Where was I at? Right here. Oh, yeah. So, Mount Gox, they're still biting the butt i mean but this is going to take a couple years probably not till next bull run and hey maybe this is even a plan you know maybe they're trying to liquidate more coins at the top that they're going to be able to liquidate crypto and culture scam boy he <laughs> lit in this bit <laughs> it's funny hey 247 bits hey i appreciate the support you guys How about Tron helping Ethereum? Tron will never help Ethereum. So Bitcoin goes a little bit more mainstream. Um, the Lightning Torch, which has been thrown around um, from people all over. Um, Elon Musk hasn't accepted it. Many people have tried to get him to. But it looks like the former Miss Universe contestant joined the Lightning Torch transaction relay. Rosa Maria Riti. Um, Jeremias Congas, founder of P2P trading platform Local Bitcoins. He opted to pass the torch outside the cryptocurrency community to Miss Universe Finland 2015. He's just trying to get laid. 
That's what he's trying to do. Homeboy's trying to get laid. That's funny, though. She's hot. She likes Bitcoin, too. She likes Babe. What's up? So, I've been trying to get this point across to you guys. Uh, <laughs> Andrew K. Yes, she can suck my cock. Hey, Chico, I have a question about the hidden messages from the last email I sent you. Do you have any questions or comments on the account or any questions you'd like to ask? I'm a little confused, brother. I haven't checked my emails for like four days. I've been taking my vacation, unplugging from cryptocurrency a little bit as much as I can. So this was a good post on um, FTrader. Um, one of my more favorite subreddits. It hasn't gotten corrupted like our... A little bit. I mean, there is a little bit of brigading of posts, but not nearly as bad as our cryptocurrency. Um, there's still good posts like this, um, good, you know, stuff from people, you know, their actual thoughts, not someone paying them to do it. Um, so this little blurb this guy put out was basically Ethereum might be the only viable backbone into the entire ecosystem. Why he thinks Facebook coin and Telegram coin will eventually run on Ethereum. So I actually agree with this guy 100% because of the fact of interoperability. You know, if you have your own blockchain, you know, it's private, you're not going to be able to send coins in and out of the ecosystem with these. I mean, interoperability is going to be huge in the future. And if you do not have a coin like ERC-20 with um, bridges to other blockchains, I mean, the value of your coin isn't there. You know, it's non-transferable. out. It's basically like airline points. I mean, that's not what people want. They want a coin that they can, hey, take my Facebook coin, turn it into, you know, Bitcoin here, then maybe turn it into Ethereum, you know, actual money that they can get out. Hey, Eric Thorpe. Thanks, man. I appreciate the tip, man. Working construction in Lincoln. Yeah, not far from me. I appreciate that, brother. Super cool of you, man. I've been in Lincoln a few times before. Hey, hey, Crypto Angels. I got 455 people watching. Hell yeah. Last time I had like 700. Where's the other 300 at? But I've been trying to get this point to you guys that Ethereum is a buy right now. I mean, the DeFi landscape that's being built is massive. Um, one thing that came out right now is the Parity Feather um, wallet. It's a light um, client-based wallet, um, super light. I mean, you don't have to wait for the whole blockchain to download. Um, and what's nice about Feather is none of your transactions have to rely on a third-party server or service other than the Ethereum nodes you will connect to. Um, a lot of other wallets out there, they do have to rely on third-party services. So... <laughs> Face palm coin. What's up, Dan? The other 300 were Ripple bots. Um, but regarding Ethereum... Augur V2 basically is coming. Um, I could see a good price movement coming with Augur from V2. Um, what's big about V2 coming out is DAI. Um, so DAI is going to be the denomination token. Um, it was the single biggest request they received since their initial release for allowing um, trading with a stablecoin. Version 1 of Augur used F for all trading. While it's, this is natural fit in many ways for a decentralized platform running on Ethereum, Ethereum is highly volatile. Introducing stablecoin denomination will, making trading, will make trading less volatile and more accessible. And the V2 contracts will still reference cash. Um, I mean, that's what it's referenced to as right now. Um, but it will instead point to an ERC token um, with no extensions. At release time, this will be set to the multi-collateral DAI token. Ooh, baby. I mean, make your DAO, you guys. If you guys aren't in any of the DeFi projects, you're crazy right now. Um, it's being built before our eyes. 
But this is regarding Maker, so I'm going to talk about something bad. I mean, 90, so they just had a vote for to um, for a 4%, for a 4 increase. Oh, wait, what is this even talking about? Am I on the right one? Oh, yeah, no, they had a um, vote to um, increase the stability fee once again. And it looked like 96% of the vote, 46,000 maker, were coming from 10 addresses. And people are like, whoa, that's a centralized, you know, governance structure. Um, and that is, I mean, you got to have concern with that. You would like it to be more de decentralized by that. But, I mean, those that have the largest stake in maker, they should have the largest voice, I mean, in what goes on. And that's why I see this coin becoming so valuable is because people are going to want a say in, you know, increasing, decreasing stability fees, things that affect, I mean, the platform like Augur. I mean, you're, you're going to see Augur want to get a good amount of maker so they have a say in what goes on with DAI. Because look at DAI is the, the denomination token on their platform. So... Jeremy Young, I can't close tabs. I mean, this is... Well, actually, I can close them once I get through them. But yeah, this is what I'm talking about, man. But, I mean, that's why I'm so bullish on Maker right now is because people are going to want a say um, in what happens with Maker. So they are going to buy up a large amount of the tokens. <clears throat> and also, I mean, Maker gets burned, I think. The rate right now is 4.6 million per year in not 4.6 million tokens, but 4.6 million USD in Maker. And then this was just announced on uh, April 8th, yesterday. So they're going to be, um, Coinbase Pro will be accepting inbound transfers of EOS, Maker, and Augur on Coinbase Pro. So basically, I ha have a feeling two coins I'm bullish on, uh, Maker and Augur. Are going to be coming to coinbase yeah i mean it legitimizes maker even more and die the stable coin um especially if they get on coinbase pro coinbase is one of the largest crypto exchanges in the u.s um i don't think they're going to be adding a token that you know has uncertainty uncertainty behind it the possibility of getting shut down <coughs> So that's pretty cool. Two coins that I've been saying for a while. I didn't know about <clears throat> Maker going to Coinbase, but I knew Augur was coming to Coinbase very soon. Hi, Tyler. Best way to buy and hold Maker. Um, best way I found was just through my Ether wallet um, using Kyber Network. E easy. So if you have a my Ether wallet with some Ethereum, um, just use that. I mean, if you have a ledger too, you can hook up your ledger to my Ether wallet. Um, trade instantly right through there. But regarding the DeFi infrastructure that's being built, um, I talked about this probably in a video like a week ago. Dharma, uh, basically borrowing and lending Ethereum and DAI. Um, so if you have some Ethereum or DAI, you can lend it out to people and earn some interest. And um, they were only in their beta, um, closed beta, when I talked about it. But they are now live to the public, baby. <clears throat> so it looks like if you want to borrow, 4%. If you want to lend, you get 8%. That's pretty nice. Damn, that's pretty nice, so get 8% on your die stable coin. Over 1 million has been borrowed so far and 1.6 million offered. Pretty cool to see this happening, though. Loans coming out of um, the Ethereum infrastructure. And it's happening before our eyes, you guys. I haven't tried to use Dharma yet, so I don't know how complicated and easy it is. But it's nice to see that this is happening. 
And I mean, this is, you know, version one of, you know, a lending platform with cryptocurrency. We're going to see the ease of use come as time goes on. Man, this guy, Bell Swipe, doesn't like crypto community. Decisions, decision. No, 8% APR. It's per year, not per day. That'd be crazy. If it was 8% per day, we would know that was a scam. <laughs> and this is pretty cool, actually. So you're able to access the DeFi landscape um, with Zerion Trustless Banking on IM Token 2.0. So basically, it gives you all the features of the decentralized um, landscape um, through one you know, platform, one interface. Uh, you can connect with all your Ethereum wallets at the same time, MetaMask, and use Wallet Connect. You can watch your historical portfolio wallets, transact Ethereum ERC-20, trade tokens with Uniswap, manage your CDP on MakerDAO, and invest in, and earn interest through the compound. And that's coming out, should be out already. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, 8% a day is BitConnect, you guys. If anything's promising you 8% a day, um, yeah, it's not real. Or it could be real, but it's not going to last for a long time. Back when um, I was using Bitfinex back in 2013, 2014, they had um, where you could lend out your crypto, actually. And because it was early on, um, there was interest of like 3% per day when it first started out. But eventually that went way down. And still don't like VeChain. No, sorry. How do you store Augur? Augur is an ERC-20 token, so you can store it um, in your ledger or any Ethereum wallet. My god, go look at QLC chain. Okay, I'll do it real quick. I have one guy in my group who's been super bullish on QLC. He's chilling it like a mofo. came down after their mainnet pump when ren video probably here soon um i'm very bullish on um republic protocol um dark pools i mean i see the value in them i'm probably gonna make it next week when i'm back in miami right now i can't make content right now i don't got my cameraman or editor Well, the thing about Maker, yeah, Augur is cheaper token right now, but the supply you gotta look at. I mean, in my personal opinion, you should get one Maker. Hands down, you should get one Maker. I mean, there's only a million of them. I could see that being, if Bitcoin gets up to, you know, 100,000, Maker would easily be a $10,000 coin. Easily. Probably more. So Elon Musk, um, he's getting bullish on cryptocurrencies. I mean, last year he got spotted with a book about cryptocurrencies and he's slowly just been talking about it more and more. He hasn't talked about what coins he's interested in. I know Ethereum he is. But he hasn't named any specific coins. Um, and he actually just said um, in a podcast that paper money is going away. Um, he said, crypto is a far better way to transfer value. It's true. I mean, it is true. I mean, you can send someone, even with Bitcoin, a million dollars in, what, 10, 15 minutes for minimal fees right now. I mean, you can transfer millions of dollars on your ledger, you know, instead of carrying around a big thing of cash or waiting for a bank transfer. So Binance um, CEO revealed that Bitcoin and crypto trading frenzy, BTC, Ethereum, XRP. And he said um, in an interview with CNBC's crypto trader, whatever his name is, I hate him. 
Um, that the number of orders being placed on the leading crypto exchange exchange is now at an all time high. Interesting. I I don't know if I believe that. I mean, maybe he has more bots running, but I don't know if I fully believe that we're back at the all time high. We don't have any new people, you know. It's just people that have been in the market right now. New people. I mean, maybe a few, but new people aren't going to start diving back into cryptocurrency until it's a back above ten thousand. I mean, I, I people saw where it was. They're too scared. They're, it's not going to catch their eye until it's at least back above ten thousand again. What are my thoughts on Ambrosius? Um, didn't they have some like stuff go down with? Um, <laughs> Thank you, Double T. <laughs> I appreciate that. He was <laughs> I dick down CZ's wife. <laughs> That's funny, Andrew K. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I believe that you know they have as much trading um, traders on Binance than in the bull run. I don't know if I believe that. Maybe he's turned on more bots, but. We don't have any new people coming. Maybe a few, but not a large wave coming in. And a lot of them have dropped out, so. Um, coin, I still hold small stack, um, but I believe in what they're doing. Um, Plasma, sharding, they're moving on it pretty quickly. Um, the public alpha has came out. So Misego has launched um, the public alpha, and they've been... Over the past few weeks, working with their partners and members of the Misego developer program to test and validate the network, and they've named the network Ari, which in Thai means hospitable, gentle, and accommodating. We believe that Ari has, released, um, has reached a level of functionality and stability that is ready for public testing and feedback. We hope that you'll find it hospitable and accommodating. So the, this version of the MiseGo network implements more viable plasma for ETH transfer and minimum viable plasma for ERC-20 token transfer. With a single operator secured against the Rink, RinkB um, Ethereum testnet, it supports the full plasma lifecycle, deposits, transfers, exits, and in-flight exits. So in their um, testing, they've been able to process 1.2 million transactions with a peak measured th throughput of 2,700 transactions per second. So that's cool to see. Um, you know, Ethereum has the potential right now for 2,700 transactions just with this alpha. Why don't I build my own coin? I've launched a coin that failed. Hooli coin. I don't know. I just don't feel the need to build one yet. Raiden's pumping. Little pump. Little pump. But yeah, Raiden's another scaling solution like a Misego. But um, Vitalik um, is an advisor for a Misego. I'm sure they... Are working not necessarily in cahoots you know day by day but they are talking to each other about their um you know what's going on with their development with plasma because of course you know there's developers all over the ethereum community working on plasma um in sharding so they're um you know giving each other their notes talking about what their successes failures so Good to see that, but price didn't react very well. 226 still. Misego's charts looks like shit. Past month it looks a lot better, especially since they had some releases. Hey, Verge Jaguar, I appreciate the tip, brother. And I appreciate that you're trying to listen to my knowledge. I've been in the crypto markets for a while, guys. Um, but just like everyone else, I'm learning as I go. Continually learning. I mean, I got out of NEO. I mean, that was a learning experience all in itself. To finally let go of my emotional holding on those tokens. You know, there's better gains to be seen in other cryptocurrencies. So regarding Ethereum and Vitalik, uh, Vitalik got some slack actually on Twitter. 
Um, this guy said, kind of disappointed in at Vitalik Buterin attending and legi legitimizing a conference with ultra scammers, second year in a row. I'm just a no nobody, but I refuse to attend scam-infested conferences. Often this convinces hosts to kick scammers out. That's what V should have done, not complaining on Twitter. And he said, um, to be clear, I had no idea that Bitcoin Satoshi's vision was coming. The panel said Bitcoin scaling and economics. I even came it, to it expecting it would be a BTC discussion. If I had, I would have definitely raised a big stink ahead of time. And then he actually went um, on to say that Craig Wright should absolutely should have a voice, but so do all of us laughing at his stupidity. So that was good to see from him. I, it sounds like Vitalik just, he, yeah, he got into a conference where he didn't even know what he was talking about. And unfortunately, he was talking about Bitcoin Satoshi's vision. Sucks. But yeah, he got some slack on Twitter for it. Ale Alessandro, um, we follow you from Europe. Thanks for following me, brother. Uh, best token for STO. The one I'm most bullish on is actually OWN. Um, what, one of the ones I'm least bullish on is Polymath. Um, I like Smartlands, too, on Stellar. But I haven't done a good enough research to make a big call on Polymath. I mean, that's the reason I don't like it as much is because it hasn't caught my eye um but i haven't done the research to make an informed call if it's garbage or not so and then the, actually um they had a ethereum meetup in taipei um this was back in march actually that happened but ethereum um ethereum vitalik talked about scaling um coming and he says that 270,000 transactions per second will be um, eventually possible on Ethereum. And it has um, some of the roll-ups, how they're going to scale. And some questions. Pretty good article. Um, pretty complex, though. Apollo is already sharding. Apollo is garbage. So this is actually pretty interesting. Um, it's a YouTube video about how this guy was able to buy the top spot on Reddit for about 200 bucks, um, able to get his post to the front page. And that, um, not much to do with cryptocurrency. I mean, this is common, but it just reminds me, if they're able to get to the front page of Reddit, you know, the entire Reddit, how easy is it for some of these cryptocurrency companies to get their post to the front page of our cryptocurrency and basically, you know, guide, control what's going on with pe what people see. Because this is where a large majority of crypto traders come for all of some of their news. So, I mean, our, I've said this before. I think our cryptocurrency is 100% corrupted. Um, and there needs to be something done with the moderators. So hopefully that comes soon, and I'm sure brigading. Uh, I'm sure it probably only takes 25 bucks, 15 bucks to get your page to the or your post to the front page of our cryptocurrency. Is that marijuana oil in that e-cigarette? No, it's just um, tobacco or nicotine. But let me tell you, the juice in this vape, whoo! I found some. The best juice ever is watermelon candy. Oh, my Lord. Thanks. Thanks, Joe Watt. I appreciate the tip, man. Price target for Stellar Lumens. Um, I mean, I'm with Long, personally, because I think the whole markets are going to reverse. I mean, we're not going to have a major crash, um, in my personal opinion, coming anytime soon. This is an accumulation zone. I mean, so if you took out a long, make sure it's a long, long. And make sure you have um, some backup just in case there is a short dip down. Don't, you know, put all your funds into that and 
if it goes down a hundred bucks, your your contract will get liquidated. So this was pretty interesting. PewDiePie, um, one of the largest YouTubers, 92 million something subs, 93 million subs. He announced on Tuesday a partnership with blockchain-powered live streaming service DLive. So I was like, what in the hell? Why is he going? I've never even heard of DLive. What is this? And he put out a video. If you don't know what DLive is, it's a live streaming platform. Live streaming is coming up in the future. That seems like a great idea, Felix. <laughs> D Live, no one's ever done that. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh so my yeah, God, he's actually gonna start streaming on there. So I was kind of interested. I went and checked out, um, you know, what it is. It's basically Leno built off the Leno blockchain. Um, they have a testnet out right now. Um, wallet D Live is running on the testnet right now. And then I went over to DLive to check it out, and yep, they do. It looks like they have streamers. I wish you could see the view count. But yeah, here's Pew PewDiePie. It looks like he's one of the largest creators on here. I have some other ones. But I wasn't familiar. I was like, ah, this looks like kind of garbage compared to Theta. It's not as user-friendly in my personal opinion i'm more bullish on theta um it's having a good day today too more green than other cryptocurrencies and theta fuel too i mean one of the good things about theta is it's working right now on the main net and you can earn theta fuel for helping streamers stream their content while DLive is just on the test net. Um, I mean, they do have a large, you know, influencer like PewDiePie coming on their platform, but I don't see it taking over Theta personally. What's up, Plain Guy 7 How you doing, brother? So, this is pretty interesting regarding Polkadot on Ethereum scaling solution. It looks like... Um, Polkadot needs an Oracle parachains like at Chainlink to bring real world data on chain. So it looks like Polkadot is going to be in, um, integrating with Chainlink. I mean, the amount of projects that are going to integrate with Chainlink is outstanding. Um, Chainlink still having a rough day, still hovering at like 53 cents. It's been in this 50, 49 to 55 cent range for a while. Mainnet should be coming. I was off, way off on the mainnet. Um, but they said the audits are being done. And the last time that was was probably like six weeks ago. So if mainnet doesn't come out in two weeks, I'm going to be like, what is going on with Chainlink? Did they find something? Yeah, Theta um, looks 100% more crisp than DLive. Chainlink is a great buy right now. I mean, mainnet's coming. When the mainnet comes, I mean, it's going to have a mainnet pump. because I don't think it's priced in already because they've been so ambiguous about when it was coming, you know? They haven't announced a date, actually. When I think they're just going to drop it, you know? And when it happens, it's going to... I haven't checked out Theta Fuel's price recently. Theta fuel price looking good. And what's cool too about Theta fuel is you can use it on Sliver.tv um, right now to buy some stuff. You know, um, you can get like gaming accessories, games, and all that. I mean, that's what's awesome about their model. It's it's creating its own little economy um, within Sliver.tv. Streamers um, get people to watch them who tip them Theta Fuel because they like them. Um, people, the people watching the streamer get paid Theta Fuel for watching them and contributing to their stream. Those people watching then can, you know, tip the streamer or they could go buy them some stuff. It's pretty cool.
So this is pretty interesting regarding Elastos. Um, this came out from um, the Elastos community, and it's called the Sword Method. So basically, this is going to um, make sure that voting um, within and rewards within Elastos happens fairly. Um, and there's going to be like a sword range. And it illustrates exactly how delegates and voters are rewarded, detailing percentage of DPoS ELA rewards given to delegates and voters in a clear and transparent way. Uh, the most beautiful part is that the sword range never changes its main structure. It only grows over time and ensures fairness of distribution and DPoS rewards between delegates and those voters. Pretty cool to see that coming out for Elastos. Haven't checked out the Elastos price either today. 422. Whoever got in on Elastos at a couple bucks, killer buy. I should have got more. What am I thinking about Bazant? I'm loving Bazant. Healthy day today for Bazant. Large token supply, so there is um, a good amount of wash trading that I think goes on with Bazant. You can almost see it in the chart. But I do like Bazant. Mainnet's coming. And the Jimmy Wallet. I mean, there's a lot more going on with Bazant than what you see on the surface. If you do the research, they have large partnerships. The Jimmy Wallet is going to be out and about and used throughout South Southeast Asia, so... Yes, Theta Fuel is related to Theta Token. Um, I mean, Theta Fuel is the fuel of the platform. Um, it's what people are rewarded with for contributing to streams. Um, Theta is more of the governance token, um, you could say. Hey, Tyler, what are my thoughts on Neo opening an office in Seattle with an ex-Microsoft guy? Is it still the China hustle? Well, I mean, I'm not necessarily saying Neo is a pure China hustle. I'm they're just not telling us everything. Um, like how Neo Global Development isn't registered under Da Hongfei or um, Eric Zheng's name. It's registered under two other developers, small developers. Why? Like what is going on? And I think there's just a lot of stuff they're not telling us. So, Gen coin, small coin, um, it's a very small cap coin. It's gone down a lot. Not a lot, lot, but it's a $3.7 million uh, market cap. And it's a masternode hosting platform coin. I own a masternode. I got a long time ago. And it's already paid itself off, and it's just producing me free money right now. But good stuff came out for Gen coin. So it looks like um, they are launching this basically freighter type program, um, and it's called the GEA protocol, and it will bring Gen Masternode holders four different types of income streams. So you're going to be getting Masternode rewards, and here are the freighter nodes that are out right now. Has a map of them. But it looks like GenCoin is not only going to be used as a masternode, they're going to be using the masternodes they're hosting um, for other things, um, such as, you know, So basically, the Gen Freighter fleet will be able to run any workload, be it in a continuously running job like a VPN or a job that runs to completion, like counting to 100 as a cargo on one of its one of or multiple of its freighters. Briefly put, your Gen Masternode will be able to work for more than just the Gen Network and generate more value in the process. So that's pretty cool to see coming out from Gen Coin. Pumped on that. I mean. The team, they build, and that's what I like about GenCoin. GEA is in beta right now. Thanks, Mbucho. I appreciate that. Hey, Thinking Crypto. What's up, brother? 
Well, and that might be what I got for today. Short little stream today. Or I've been on for about an hour. I'll answer a few questions with you guys, hang out for a bit more. But yeah, today is my last day until I head back to uh, Miami. Last day in Chico. And then I'm heading back and getting all the content going. Um, I'm going to try. My goal for next month. What's next month? Or this month. By May 15th, I'm going to have 50,000 subs. And you guys are going to help me make it there. Tell your friend. Tell your sister. Tell your wife. Tell your girlfriend. Tell your boyfriend. Subscribe to Chico Crypto. Because I'm getting... I'm putting out fire content, you guys. I like Dogecoin. I I have a feeling that's one of the coins um, Elon Musk likes as well. He's all about them memes. Can you show some weed? I don't got any weed. Which smart contracts am I most bullish on? Well, I actually think Neo's smart contracts are really good. Um, but I'm probably most bullish on Ethereum. Any other master nodes that I'm running? Um, no. As of right now, I was running a BedX one. Well, actually, no. A Polon 2. It's another master node hosting platform. I do have one of those. Uh, this one, lot lower market cap, only three hundred thousand. Yeah, this one's pretty much, pretty much dying. Can barely get rid of your rewards right now. Only two hundred sixteen dollars in volume. Any news on zero X staking? No, not yet. Um, they do have the proposal out, and it is being looked at and worked. But like I said, Xerox is going a great buy right now because of that. I mean, if they have the proposal out, it means it's it's getting looked at. Win my sponsorship with Jen? I don't know. That'd be cool. I appreciate the tip though, CXX. Yes, I still hold a large amount of Link. Large amount. I sold half of my Neo for Link. The other half went into Digibyte. Manny Alvarez asks if coins that will have the biggest gains in the next bull run. It's hard. It's hard to predict, man. Um, but like, I don't. Do you mean like the parabolic bull run? I mean that might be a year away, and there could be some new coins that we haven't we haven't even seen yet that will be the ones with the bigger gainers. But in the short term, the ones I'm looking at um, are zero X chain link. Um, another one republic protocol ren is one i'm looking at i think that's highly undervalued give us a percentage of what your holdings are in my i just did one of those videos ezra it's not much difference changed a tiny bit but that video was put out like two three weeks ago i'm super bullish still um on Chainlink, Leonard. I've checked out Xerox Bitcoin. Uh, concept's pretty cool, no doubt about that, but hasn't gained traction. Has a high amount of volume, though. Volume has been increasing, too. I mean, the volume's almost higher than its market cap. Pretty crazy to see. Oh yeah, I'm bullish on Enigma. Very bullish on Enigma. I mean, that's crazy actually. Xerox Bitcoin almost has higher volume than Enigma right now. Yes, I am the craziest guy in the crypto space. I will <laughs> no doubt about that. If you meet me, you will understand. I'm definitely the craziest. So do you guys have any recommendations for YouTubers I should team up with? I'm trying to, I'm thinking about building my own little crew, you know? 
a alliance of sorts with other crypto YouTubers. You guys have any recommendations on people I should be talking to possibly I have looked at Argo um, not a bit not the biggest fan of it looks good though crypto lover is that a crypto youtuber <laughs> Keith warning I, Keith is funny no, not zombie. I mean, if the guys, the crypto zombie would start putting out original content, I would maybe work with them, but no. He puts out garbage content. Ivan on tech, Supo man. Actually, Supo man, he wrote me to call a truth. Truce. He wanted us, because I made fun of him in the Chip Chodler episode, and it was pretty good. Got him, and he, like, next two days he messaged me asking for a truce. I don't know if I should keep that truce. Mr. Kristoff, I like Mr. Kristoff, he's cool. Da Vinci. Crypto R Us, no, I hate Crypto R Us. We've had our shit back in the day. That guy's a total, um, shithead chill Alex Jones Hugh Janus I remember who Hugh Janus he went to school with me no Superman yeah what's shitty about a lot of these crypto youtubers is they fucked over so many people in the last bull run by shilling their garbage ICOs um, and now that that the bear market take o took over, and a lot of their channels just got crushed. Mine actually started gaining, um, doing pretty well. Mine increased in subscribers, while a lot of these other guys, their view count just went, Pow! their subscribers went. Pow! Now they're trying to set themselves up as saints again for the next bull run. I mean, Ian Bolina's doing that. Um, other crypto YouTubers are doing it. Freaking Data Dash is trying to get his substratum garbage off his back no don't let that shit happen i like omar yeah i would love to collaborate with him he's awesome crypto omar he knows what he's talking about he knows about the DeFi landscape um so yeah very supportive of that guy i do like crypto daily too i got into one of his live streams with um Subo man and box mining and was talking shit and crypto daily wasn't getting mad he was just laughing so i thought that was pretty cool no crypto twins aren't doing videos anymore they'll be back when you know the heat of the markets come around but they they can't make any money right now from it so they're like ah Hey, thanks, Aussie Investor. I appreciate it, guys. I do like Blue Collar Crypto. Yeah, I don't know what happened to that guy. He basically fell off the map. I like MM Crypto, too. He's cool. Yeah, Omar is old school. He's been around for a long time. He's been, like, making videos for three, four years. Oh, I don't like Hashoshi. He acts like he's a developer. I don't like like Ivan on tech or guys that say, I'm a developer doing crypto videos. Go develop something if you're a developer. Why are you doing crypto videos? What the hell? Nah, you're not a developer. You can't create shit. Why do we exist, Dank Williams? I'm, I don't know. I really don't know why we exist. I exist to hopefully entertain you guys and give you information about the crypto markets to hopefully get you some gains. JSNP4. I really like Kyber Network. Yes, I have heard about MM Crypto. Yes, I have gotten threatened a few times. Um, Plain Guy 7. 
more than a few times. Especially when I went after VeChain. When I made those VeChain videos, oh, I got threatened. They threatened my family. They, yeah, it was pretty, pretty gnarly. But it was worth it. Let me tell you. Do I shave my back? No, I can't even reach that. Yeah, um, Pablo Escobar, that is a good um, indicator. Percent from all-time high. I mean, if it is a good project and you see it still, you know, 90%, 92% from the all-time high, it may be a good time to invest. Oh, I love crypto, finally. Dude, if I could collab with PewDiePie, shit would blow up, but he would never collaborate with just some... 30,000 sub or he needs at least a million. That's why we have to get um, our, my goal, our goal of getting Chico Crypto up to 50,000 subs by May 15th. That's my goal. So I'm going to be putting out I'm going to be trying some stuff different. Like this break has given me a nice little relaxation, got my mind clear, able to focus. And I'm going to be bringing more comedy into this channel, like some skits and stuff. I hope you guys like that stuff. I'm still going to, of course, be doing the regular content, but more skits and funny stuff like that. Try to keep people entertained. And, you know, use, um, you know, the assets I have with my company right now, my cameraman and editor, um, he can do some cool stuff besides, you know, just shooting, talking about cryptocurrency. So if you guys want to see some pretty cool skits, funny ones, I'm hoping to put those out here soon, especially when I get back. Yeah, more comedy. I'm going to try to be funny. It's hard to be funny. I'll tell you that right now. Nobu Chen, thanks, man. I appreciate you tuning in from France. It's probably pretty late over there right now. Dude, I, crypto and culture, I'd love for you to do skits with me, man. Crypto and culture actually has his own um, YouTube channel, if you guys want to check it out. He's about seven messages above right now. Oh, yeah, Chip is coming. What's going to be funny, though, is the next conference I'm invited to. I don't know if I'm going to get invited to any conferences because I'm so controversial. And if Binance is there, they'll probably pay money for me to not be there. Um, but I'm going as Chip. Like Any conference I go to from now on, I'm dressing up as Chip. Wow, I would love to have 10 million subscribers. I'm pumped on the next and national launch. Um, I'm actually can't say that, but it's going good. Using it is pretty good, you guys. Oh, it's only 9 p.m. in France. Awesome. At 50k, take a long shower to celebrate. Oh, when I hit 50k, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway of some sorts. I haven't done a giveaway on the channel. So I need to do some sort of giveaway for 50k. So let's get it up there. Maybe give away like a few ledgers. We'll see how the payments come in. If the payments start coming in, maybe a whole Bitcoin to the grand prize winner. That would be freaking cool. Yeah, Raymond. Amise Go got that test net going. 2700 TPS. Looking good. That's awesome. I love having followers from all over the world. Why didn't more altcoins die in this market, Pablo? Well, um, they are dying. They're dying a death right now, a lot of them. Um, I mean, if you go back to what happened in 2013, 2014, um, a lot of those didn't die either. They're actually still around. And it's the same concept, um, but... There's there's coins still listed on Coin Market Cap, but if you get to page like three, four, most of those projects are dead right now. I mean, the volume they have like hundreds of dollars in volume. 
<coughs> I mean, even you get to page, yeah, three right now. Like this, Uno Batanium, whatever this coin is. It's $741 worth of volume, pro mostly dead. Dynamic trading, that one's mostly dead. $1,000 in volume. And the farther you get down, the more you start finding. This one, economy, 594, basically dead. I mean, they still could be revitalized if they get on a bigger exchange, but most likely it's not gonna, nothing's gonna happen. Hair gel fund for Chip? I'm gonna have to, you guys. This hair is getting wild. And that's another reason I can't cut my hair is because I have Chip. Chip don't have short hair. Chip has long, slick back hair. It's actually been killing me, Brian, since I got here. Allergies. I have, like, no allergies in Florida, but here in Northern California, Chico, holy mackerel. Let me tell you. I do like NSYNC. Justin Timberlink. He can sing. Sing like an angel. Hey, Jingwu. I'm glad you're here, man. The truth comes out of Chico Crypto. I have no filter. I'll tell you that right now. I say what's on my mind. Sometimes I regret it big time, too. <laughs> oh, Double T. Thanks for the tip, brother. Piece of the pie. Learning Crypto. Omar. Crypto mugs and candor. Would be good for chemistry. Go fill your vape. Hell yeah, brother. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> Andrew K. Oh, wow. Well, the only thing I don't like about Crypto Candor, and this may have changed. She was part of um, the group that doesn't like me. Um, Crypto Zombie, um, Crypto 99, all those guys. I hope to go to tr the IOHK um, conference summit in Miami. It's going to be going on like right when I get back. I'm good, David M. How are you doing, brother? Thanks for everyone tuning in. A lot of people like Matrix AI. I just don't. I haven't. I have a lot of people that shill it in my um, Telegram group. Oh, yeah. If you guys haven't joined the Telegram group and you're here watching this um, stream... Come join. I'm going to be a lot more active. I haven't been very active um, in it the past few days because I've been <clears throat> on vacation, just, you know, trying to unplug from everything. But once I get back into Miami, I'm going to be on it 24-7 like I usually am. What are my thoughts on Adam? Um, there's a lot of stuff being built on um, Cosmos, so. But the market cap still is extremely high. And it's getting, price is getting crushed. I'd say wait it out. Wait it out another couple. I mean, it is a buy, in my personal opinion. Cosmos is a buy. But I haven't put in any money. I'm going to wait for it to come down a little bit more. I still think that's way too high. Um, I haven't looked into BGOGO, Shane. So I'll try to look. I'm just not a fan of any centralized exchange. I'm not going to support it. I want to support DEX. DEX. DEX all the way. Oh, yeah. Crypto Lark, too. That guy's a fucking douchebag. <coughs> Major douchebag. So, well, you guys, um, I appreciate all you guys tuning in. Um, I still have packing to do. I got to do laundry and stuff because um, I'm flying back to Florida tomorrow. Long day. Long day, let me tell you. I leave California at like 12 and I don't get in until like 10 p.m. So, tomorrow I do have a video coming out regarding um, the financial collapse. That's probably going to be coming within the next five, ten years, um, and what 
that means for cryptocurrency. So that video is coming out tomorrow. It's pre-produced one, one of my normal videos. I shot it while I was still back in Florida. Um, and then maybe Thursday I'll do, no, I'm not gonna do a live stream on Thursday. I need to just get back to my content. So Wednesday I'll have a video and I'm gonna be traveling. And then Thursday I'm gonna be shooting a video or getting everything, writing my script. Um, doing the research and then Friday we'll be back to regular content. So Everyone who tuned in I appreciate it. You guys are the best you keep Chico crypto going everyone who threw the tip uh, Double T crypto all you guys who threw the tip um, Smith family gave me hair gel fun for chip. I mean You guys are awesome. You guys keep the channel going um as you guys know, I try to put as much um, of the funds from that I receive back into the channel. Um, next thing I think I might be trying to do is trying to put out a good website, Chico Crypto website. So it's one of my next big investments that I'm going to be doing. Um, don't know exactly what it's going to contain, but I think I need one. So again, you guys, appreciate y'all. I'll see you tomorrow with that video and then again on Friday. So... Cheers.